Nighttime in Moscow. This is known as Theater Square and is a very beautiful spectacle. When I tell you that there are over 50 theaters in Moscow, it shows that they like to entertain and to be entertained. One of the favorite pastimes in the matter of dancing is for a group on the stage to see which one can outdo the other. And although their dance is very energetic, the winner may have to dance for hours, and while he works, the audience eats. This is the dance of the nations, and Uncle Sam is always represented. Nowhere else in the world can you find such a huge, enthusiastic, and receptive audience as you find in Moscow. Another kind of entertainment is found in the clubhouses for workers. And these are very, very popular. When the day's tasks are over, they like to go to their favorite clubhouse and meet their friends. Perhaps I should have said opponents. Chess is a great game in Russia, and they have produced many champions. In the clubhouses, there is dining and dancing too. It's a place to spend a pleasant evening. Russians have always been known for their love of music. Every city has its symphony orchestra and gives many concerts. Each man knows his music well and plays it as he feels it. There is no leader. You'll notice that the eye of the musician is always on his music. Everyone has heard of Tolstoy, the great Russian author. This is his home. It is now a museum and is preserved exactly as it was when Tolstoy lived in it. It's a two-story house standing in the heart of a large tree-shaded park. In this room, Tolstoy's study, stands one of the earliest of Edison's dictaphones. You see, Thomas Edison was a great admirer of Tolstoy's works, and he gave it to him when he found that Tolstoy was very nearsighted and had difficulty in writing. In the peaceful grounds with their birch trees and quiet waters, Tolstoy gained many of his inspirations. 